One of our main goals when we make videos is to educate those who are looking to move to New Brunswick about the Greater Moncton area. In several of our videos, we've addressed both the good and the bad because like any city, Moncton is not perfect and it has its fair share of issues. If you're thinking of moving here, you need to know this stuff. So we've done our best not to sugarcoat it. So most of the comments we get on our videos are positive, but lately we've had a few comments that focus on Moncton's negative aspects. And some have suggested that we don't talk about these things because our motivation is just to sell houses. So we pulled these comments out and today we're going to talk about the issues they point out. So let's read them first. Yep, sounds good. Okay, so up first, uh... With all the influx of people moving to Moncton, it really effed up the cost of real estate, increased crime and homelessness. It was much better in 2019. So we have influx of people moving to Moncton, cost of real estate, and increased crime and homelessness. Okay, so the second one that we want to talk about, um, remember these people are realtors, they want you to buy. Sadly, rent here is very high, home costs have gone up drastically, crime and homelessness is through the roof, jobs are very, very difficult to find. Please do your true research before coming here. Yes, it's beautiful, but it's not the heaven they say. So again, here we have our own motivation. motivation. Rent is very high, home costs have gone up. Crime and homelessness are through the roof and jobs are difficult to find. Yep. All right. Then we've got, please remember, these are realtors. Understand their motives for making videos like this. No one born here can afford a house anymore due to low wages and inflated prices. Also, you will wait years to get a family doctor. 14 plus hours wait time at the ER, if you're lucky. If you don't speak French, it will be extremely hard to find a decent job as this is a bilingual province. Also, we have the highest tax rates in Canada. Enjoy. So here again, uh, we have our own motivation uh, for making these videos. No one born here can afford a house, uh, low wages, inflated prices. You will wait years to get a family doctor, 14 plus hours wait time at the ER if you're lucky. If you don't speak French, it will be extremely hard to find a decent job. Highest tax rates in Canada. Okay, so can't forget that houses and rent are way overpriced. So once again, housing and rent prices. Good. Okay, so the common threads uh, seem to be our motivation when we're making these videos, rent and housing prices, taxes, crime and homelessness, the job market and wages, healthcare and bilingualism. So let's get to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we won't spend a lot of time on this one, but yes, we are realtors who make a living helping people buy and sell homes. I don't think that's a surprise. Nope. Uh, when we started, we made a conscious decision to make videos that have actual value and are not just fluff. We do a lot of research to find the questions people might have, and we make videos that educate and answer those questions honestly, regardless if it's a positive or a negative. By doing that, we hope to attract people who want to work with us. Yep. So up next, probably the most common one, and that's rent and housing prices. There's no question prices have dramatically increased in the last five years. The influx of people coming into this area, ironically, many of which came because they were attracted to our low real estate prices, among other things, has made it so the demand has consistently far outweighed the supply, which has, of course, driven prices up. Five years ago, the benchmark price for a single-family home in Greater Moncton was 173900 Today, it's 368300 That's more than double. Mm -hmm. But what hasn't doubled locally are wages. So if you're someone who's been living in the area for a long time, working a decent but average job, you're probably barely making ends meet, so trying to buy a house is quite a challenge. The same thing goes if you're renting. We've heard a lot of negative comments about greedy landlords in the past few years. And sure, there are some out there that just are completely looking to take advantage of people. But there are also investors who just want to do want to be good landlords, take care of their buildings, find good tenants and be as fair as possible with rent. We know this because we have clients in this exact position. These guys are not profiting thousands each month. If they're lucky, they're making a few hundred dollars. 
which they probably set aside for future repairs. Some of them are even happy just to break even each month. But unfortunately, with prices doubling in the last five years, if you're a landlord, you have to adjust rents to offset that. And that's not even considering that over and above paying more for properties, their expenses have also gone up like crazy. Exactly. As locals, we ourselves are still often shocked with how much houses uh, go for. But even so, it doesn't change the fact that the price of real estate in New Brunswick, including Greater Moncton, is still among the cheapest in Canada. Mm -hmm. For example, if we compare to Ontario or BC, because those are the two provinces we're seeing the most migration from, compared to our $368,000 benchmark price right now in Greater Moncton, Ontario is at just under $885,000 and BC is over $998,000. So then you've got those who say, oh yeah, but the wages in those places are way higher than here. Well, they are higher, but looking up the latest available data, the after-tax median household income in Ontario is $83,600 and in BC it's $81,300. In New Brunswick, it's $65,200. So yes, we are about $20,000 less, but our benchmark price is over $500,000 less. So the ratio of income versus uh, benchmark prices is, is still well within our favor. So up next are taxes. We've talked about our high taxes in a few videos now. I think our pros and cons of living in Moncton and the seven things you need to know before moving to Moncton, but it keeps coming up. So let's talk about it. <laughs> taxes in New Brunswick are high. Property taxes are high, sales tax is high, and income tax is high. <laughs> Let's get sales tax out of the way. Sales tax here is what they call harmonized sales tax or HST. It's 15% and it's charged on most goods and services except some of the bare essentials like groceries and ba baby items and things like that. There was actually an announcement just last week that it will be reduced by 2% over the next two years, so it will eventually be 13%. Income tax is difficult to talk about because there are endless variables depending on your situation, your income, dependents, ded deductions, and all that stuff. But if we were to use an income of $60,000 and compare among the provinces, New Brunswick comes in pretty well in the middle of the pack. Quebec and Nova Scotia, PEI, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan all come in a little higher. Mm. Property taxes are what we hear the most about, and yep, they're high. One thing to note is your tax bill is made up of a few parts, with the main ones being the municipal portion and a provincial portion. If the property you're being taxed on is your primary residence, you get a rebate for the provincial portion. If it's not, you're on the hook for both. One of the big reasons property taxes have been a popular topic over the last couple of years is that the assessment values have been catching up to market values, which Mark mentioned earlier, they've more than doubled in the last five years. So let's look at the example of a $368,000 house, which is roughly the benchmark price at the moment. It represents what the average house with the most common features in the area would sell for. Two years ago, the assessment of that house might have been 250000 so that's what the taxes were based on. But as assessment values catch up to market values, that house is now being taxed at 368000 yep. or close to that. So that the annual tax bill went up from 3600 to 5300 If we compare that to popular areas people are coming from and pretend for a minute you could actually buy a house for $368,000 in Toronto, property taxes on that house would be right around $2,452. And in Vancouver, it would only be about 1000 bucks. So yeah, put like that, there's no question our property taxes are high. Now, if we look at it from the benchmark prices for each of those places, you're now paying $7,400 in taxes on your $1.1 million home in Toronto. And if you're in Vancouver, you're paying $3,700 on your $1.35 million house. <laughs> okay, let's talk about crime and homelessness. Over the last four to five years, Moncton has experienced a significant influx of people leading to noticeable growth in the city. Mm -hmm. As longtime residents, we see a big difference in the amount of people around. And with this growth, we've also seen a rise in homelessness. Moncton's become one of New Brunswick city, New Brunswick City's uh, most affected by the issue. And although it's hard to track, based on some reports, as of late 2023, around 800 people experienced homelessness uh, across the province's three major cities, so Fredericton, St. John, and Moncton. And certainly Moncton would have at least its fair share 
probably more. There are several con contributing factors to this issue, including a lack of affordable housing, mental health and addiction issues, the population increase, and financial struggles. Now, to be fair, I think we can all agree that increase in homelessness isn't limited to Moncton or New Brunswick. This is an issue Canada-wide where any at any given time there are 235,000 Canadians experiencing homelessness. But even though we have talked about it in other videos, we did want to acknowledge it again because it has popped up a few times in the comments. So yes, to be clear, for the size of our city and population, homelessness is an issue in Moncton. In addition to the rise in homelessness, Moncton has also seen an increase in crime. Although our overall crime rates are approximately 23% lower than the national average in Canada, certain areas and types of crime are notable around here. Violent crime rates are 5% lower than the national average, but in the most common types of crimes reported in Moncton include assault, break-ins, and drug offenses among some. Property crimes like theft and vandalism are also quite prevalent. So personally, I know that crime is on the rise in Moncton, and honestly, this started even before the pandemic and even before the influx of people moving to our province. At the end of my career in the banking industry, I ended up experiencing three workplace robberies within 18 months. I want you to know that it's not something that I talk about often, and it's a very personal subject for me. Even though when I say this to people, I get the question, really, that happened in Moncton? <laughs> yes, really, it, this happened in Moncton. Uh, the last robbery I experienced was very violent, and it left me unable to return to banking, and it changed my perception of the workplace. The last robbery left me wondering if I was even going to make it home. And at the time, I had three young children, and I needed something safe for them and for me. So Moncton has not been immune to crime, and as the city grows, we see more. I wish Moncton could have stayed the city with a hometown feel, but as cities grow, so does some of the not-so-good stuff. Yeah. The job market in Greater Moncton is quite diverse, and it's driven by several sectors like IT and communication, retail and services, transportation and logistics, healthcare, education, and tourism and hospitality. But even with this diversity, New Brunswick's economy is not as robust as some of the larger provinces like Ontario or BC. Plus, with retail, hospitality, and service industries being some of the major employers, the jobs do tend to be lower paying. And speaking of lower paying jobs, let's look at, at wages. Out of the 13 provinces, New Brunswick is ranked fourth from the bottom for the lowest minimum wage at $15.30 per hour. So with one of the lower minimum wage rates in Canada, it certainly creates economic challenges for workers, many of which struggle to keep up with the cost of living. And while the cost of living in New Brunswick is generally lower than other parts of Canada, wages have not kept pace with inflation and rising costs for essentials like housing, food, and transportation. Unfortunately, like many other provinces in Canada, New Brunswick faces a shortage of doctors. Wait times to get a family doctor can be years. And as of late 2023, about 90,000 New Brunswickers were without a family doctor. So if you're someone who needs to be followed for specific health issues, this is something you really want want to consider before moving here. Wait times in ERs are brutal as well. Uh, Vitalité Health Network is one of our two health organizations here, and a report said their objective was to have ER wait times cut to two hours or less, but wow, are they way off on that. Honestly, if you're in a non-emergency situation but don't have a doctor and need to see one, it's not unusual to wait 12 to 14 hours in ER to be seen. Your better bet is to use one of the after-hours clinic they don't take walk-ins and only work on appointments, and they're extremely hard to get on the phone. But once you do, at least you're not waiting for hours upon hours to be seen. You just show up for your appointment. So last fall, my son actually hurt his foot playing football. And after a couple of weeks, he still could not run on it. And he complained that it was still hurting a lot. So I called my family doctor. And I'm one of the lucky ones that I have a family doctor. She's been my doctor since my early 20s. So when I called, I was surprised to be told that it would take a month to get in to see her. The receptionist was very nice, but explained that if it was a soft tissue injury, it would probably have started to heal by now, and it sounded more like a fracture or a broken bone, and that I should take him to the emergency room to get x-rayed. Honestly, I do everything possible to not go to the ER because I know it will take hours. So I actually took him to another province, to a small community hospital, and we were seen, x-rayed, and diagnosed within three hours. It was a bit of a drive, but less time than we would have spent uh, if we'd gone to the Moncton or the George Dumont Hospital. Sad but true. Yeah. 
New Brunswick is the only official bilingual province in Canada, in both French and English, and some of the comments suggested that it can be a big hurdle in the job market for those who are English-only speakers. And the shorter answer is yes, it can be. It'll depend largely on the industry and the region within the province that you're looking in. If you're applying for a public sector job, you will most likely need to be bilingual due to the need to be able to serve the client in their language of choice. This could include positions in healthcare, education, and especially government. If you speak English only, there's a good chance you'll have to go to the private sector. Mm -hmm. Even there, some positions will require you to be bilingual, particularly in public-facing positions, but it's more lenient. Where in a government job posting, bilingualism will probably be listed as mandatory. In a private sector job posting, it may be that bilingualism is an asset, Mm -hmm. but not mandatory. Or they may be hiring for several positions, whereas bilingualism is not necessary. If you do want to add that qualification to your resume, there are resources and programs available for English speakers to learn French and vice versa. And some employers will also provide language training and support. So I only speak English and I worked in the banking industry in Moncton for 23 years with relatively little issues. I know I did lose out on some job opportunities over the years because I was not bilingual. And I will say it can be frustrating to have all of the necessary qualifications But because you don't speak French, you are ruled out. I have also run across dealing with individuals in a retail setting who only speak French and cannot serve me in English. Again, this scenario seems a bit one-sided as it's a bilingual province and anyone in the service industry should be able to speak both official languages. However, I have lived in Moncton for 25 years and I knew this aspect would come up. I knew that being unilingual would be limiting, and in some situations it was and still is. But I stayed in a bilingual province, and I understand the language requirements. Okay, so I think we hit all the major points that tend to come up. Uh, The goal of this video wasn't to come up with arguments against the comments, because they are valid concerns. And even though we have indeed talked about uh, these things in other videos. It was basically to address and acknowledge them in one go-to video. In no way do we think Greater Moncton is perfect, but overall, when you weigh the pros and cons, we think it's still a pretty darn good place to live. And unfortunately, I don't think we're facing anything here that pretty much every other Canadian city isn't facing as well. So as always, your comments are welcomed. We are Denise and Mark. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.